Utah City Parks and Recreation Leisure Department. And today we're going to make stylized birds. How did I decide on stylized birds? Well, I got inspired because once you travel around the world and you see pictures of birds, you realize that everything doesn't have to be realistic. So, in that case, you can make birds any way you like, as long as you know your art elements. What are your art elements? Your art elements are your lines and how you twist and turn them. So, these are some art elements. Straight lines going on an angle, zigzag lines, dots, circles. If you have U-shaped, you can bend them any way you like. So, that's what I did on this paper. But it's really important that if you're going to do a lot of sketching, you need to have a sketchbook so you can bend tons and tons of lines any way you like to make drawings. And here's my sketchbook right here. And I made a little picture with my art elements. So you can see some zigzag lines, some curves, and I think we all know how to do this. You just take your pencil and turn your line, turn it on the paper. It's going to make your lines for you. And then you just have fun with it. Okay, so I turned this, these lines here into these and these into circles. And I know I want to make a bird, so I've been looking at lots and lots of birds. You can, I can go to the zoo. I can look out windows, I can go to the park, and I get an idea of what birds do. And so you can do the same thing when you have time. So these are my art elements. And I'm going to use these art elements and draw on top of them with what I have here called fabric paint. Now fabric paints are fun to use. If you have some old wallpaper that have fabric front, you can use them or you can even get them at upholstery stores, maybe for free because we don't hardly ever use them anymore. Or you can use fabric. Now you probably have someone in your family who likes to sew and if they do, they maybe can give you the scraps. <laughs> Make sure they have a light background. It's easier to see your fabric colors. This one is wallpaper, fabric wallpaper. And it's a light color, but does have some little different colors inside of it and some patterns on it, a little bit of texture. I use this because I just happen to have it. These are fabric paints. You can buy them in a tube or you can buy them in a spray form. The spray is a little bit messy, but they work. Shake it up. And these, you can actually shake them in the bottle. They're a little bit stiffer. So with fabric paint, you just take your pen, you take a little paper clip like that, and you stick it in the hole. Clean it out a little bit and wipe it on your paper towel. So always have a paper towel handy, and then you'll be able to use this. Now with fabric paint, you have to stretch the paint so you can kind of Hold it here and move your hand right on top of your lines. Oh, did you see that? Move that. Now I'm going to do one more so you can see it. Use that and make little dots all around with my fabric paint, like that. Then I can go back in and make a line. It's all about pressure when you use fabric paints because if you use a lot of pressure, you're gonna squeeze on a lot of paint. It's not a mistake, just change it. So I'm going to take a brush here, and as you see, I made that big blob in the middle. I could just brush it all over, and it just becomes another part of my design. You don't want to have big blobs of paint when you're making a picture with fabric paints. So you want to spread it out there. And that can become a part of your design too. You can also do fabric painting on t-shirts. It's a lot of fun to do, to make a dragon on a t-shirt. 
and then use fabric paints to cover it up. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make a bird. I already have a bird handy. There's my picture of the bird that I'm going to do. As you see I have my straight lines, I have curved lines that I made for the body, and I have a strained neck. This is almost like this one. This bird has a, a, lot, a neck that's a lot longer and more exaggerated. So now that I have my bird, I'm going to go through it. You can use more than one color for your bird. So how about I start with orange? It's a nice bright color. The Aztec people really enjoy using lots of bright colors like the sun. So I'm going to use a bright color right now. So yellows and reds and blues. Stick to the bright colors. You, especially if you're going to do a particular style. Where do you get inspiration from? You go and find it. You can look for it. If I want to look at birds, I will look at my window. I'll find lots of birds there. Or I could go to the zoo. I could go to the park. I could step outside. I'm going to see lots of different birds. I can also look at art magazines. And sometimes I get inspired by those. In this book, I did get inspired for my birds. I looked at a page called African Art. This African mud cloth has some stylized pictures in it. Over here, there's a stylized bird. Stylized just means exaggerated, okay? Made a little bit more pronounced or more stretched than a real bird, a real object, okay? So this one is made full of lines, as you can see. And I just kind of looked at the picture and it kind of helped me to move forward with what I wanted to do. This is my stylized bird. And I made it with lots of art elements, lots of straight lines, some zigzags, some curves, and then I'm going to go about painting it. Like I said before, when you use lines, especially when you use fabric paint line, you have to be very careful how much pressure you put on the bottles because you're going to get a block, but the block doesn't have to be a mistake. You can just go ahead and take your brush, make sure you have a little cup of water and a brush, take a little brush and then you spread that block out and it becomes a part of your design. So I'm going to make an attempt to make straight lines and all my curved lines with the two the pink. Um, I don't know how much pressure is going to be on this bottle, so I'm going to do it just as, a, just as it is in the bottle. But I can also take this little paper clip and stick it in a hole. Let's see what happens. This paint is probably ready to go. It will be okay. But if it's not, I'm just going to take a brush and brush right over it. That way, whatever you do, it doesn't have to be a mistake. Then it's so much easier 
to draw with fabric paint. If you get stuck and you keep squeezing the bottle, you're going to get a puddle. These little puddles of fabric paint are hard to dry. It will take a little bit longer to dry, so you have to wait maybe a half an hour instead of 20 minutes. Okay. You can see, and it stands up, which is really nice. Fabric paint is wonderful that way. I'm going to use another color. This one is black. A little dot. Oh, look at that. Doesn't want to hardly come out of the bottle. It did. I'm going to wipe it off. Just because I want it to be flowing, I'm going to take this paper clip and stick it in the bottle. There we go. Stick it in. Move it up and down like that. Wipe my paper clip off. And start to work so I can draw with it. Now you don't have to, oh, this is an old one, I think. It's hard to squeeze, and this is where you can get a real sloppy line. So go slowly and squeeze harder if it's stuck in the bottle. That just means that the paint is a little bit older, Here's my finished product. 
put this one down. Here's one of the finished products that we did today. Anyway, if you want to enjoy more of these kinds of things, these kinds of paintings, or drawing and watercolor in general, meet us at the Tucson City Parks and Recreation Randolph Center. Okay, you're finished with your drawing. We must remember that drawings are wonderful, but we can't leave our mess for somebody else. If you've done this, it is time for you to clean up. Once you're all finished your drawing, clean up your mess, and you're ready to hang your picture up. I put a little background on it. I put a little bit of construction paper on it so that I can hang it up in my room if I want to. Then I have my room a little, a little bit more cheery than it looks. We look forward to seeing you at Tucson City Parks and Recreation. Leisure classes, bye for today.